anatomy of the human mind is such a beautiful and complicated structure. I love it. It holds so much mystery. Mysteries deeper than the least explored underwater life. The human brain is said to have over 100 billion nerve cells, otherwise known as neurons. Now, each neuron is intricately connected to some 10,000 other neurons. Let me put this in perspective for you, just in case you're having a hard time crunching these numbers. That is more than the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy. Now, did you know, from one single human brain, if you were to lay out each neuron end to end, you could wrap it around the Earth twice. Not a ball, not a jumbo-sized airplane, not the world's largest auditorium. The Earth, twice. I've got two words for you, amaze balls. The human brain is such an amazing and impressive organ. I think it's probably God's best gift to mankind. Um, there's a study that shows that your human brain is still 30 times more powerful than some of the world's best supercomputers. Now, further research by two students from Carnegie Mellon University shows that your human brain's computing ability can fetch you between $4,700 to $174,000 on an hourly basis if you decide to rent it out. I don't think that's cool. Yeah, right? Yeah, but here's, but here's the thing, though. You might say, like, you know, why are we talking about this whole human brain? Like, you know, I thought we came here to learn something cool about AI. But that's because every now and so often, we fail to take a step back to appreciate some of the collective works that has gone into our technological evolution, all thanks to the human brain. Now, in 2016, there was a study carried out by three Chinese researchers, and this was the goal. They wanted to compare the IQs of some of our world's most famous AI systems. Top of the list was Google. It's AI coming with an IQ score of about 47.3. And the next in line was Chinese search engine, Beidou, at 33. And the next in line was Microsoft Bing, at 32. And then followed by Siri, at 24. Now, why am I surprised you that Google leads the you know, average tech park, like, you know, IQ score there? But the average six-year-old has an IQ of, wait for it, 55.5. Don't you just love that? Guys, let's use our head. Today, the budding concept of artificial intelligence surrounds us everywhere we go. Not just in Nigeria, but across the globe. We see this application use case in our video games, in our FIFA, in our Far Cry, Call of Duty, whatever. Even as email spam filters to our Uber when it's doing such pricing. Or is it Google Maps when it's rerouting you? Like, you know, AI application has become so ubiquitous in our everyday lives that we hardly recognize it. And just before I proceed, just a little primer as to what artificial intelligence is. It is, the, it is empowering, it's simply just empowering our computer systems with the ability to independently learn, think, and then make decisions on their own without the help of its creator. Now, I'll give you a little story. When I was growing up, um, my neighbors had this desktop system. I think it was my first experience with it. And that dad, for some reason, had taken the display monitor to work. Only thing that was left was the keyboard and the CPU. Now, while we were playing, one of the kids came up to me and said, all right, did you know by mere typing your name on this computer, this keyboard, that you can't see the display monitor. You remember your face, your age, what you wore. In fact, I tell you a whole host of things that was just too good to be true. I was like, wow, we don't mean it. The following day, I ran to the house. I was very excited, like, you know, waiting for this computer you know, to recognize me. Like, you know, I stood there waiting for it. And I was disappointed. Like, this computer didn't recognize me. And they all laughed at me, like, you know, for being so naive. After some while, I joined them laughing. But today, that joke's on us. Why? Because computer systems now cannot recognize us. Fast speech and audio and visual recognition systems. Just recently, I came across the works of a young man here in Nigeria by the name of Faladiji. And this is what he created, using the concept of OCR and machine learning. A system with the ability to recognize our own Nigerian number plates. Now you may say, what's well, the big deal? Well, it's a big deal because works like this can lead to the advancement of catching traffic offenders. And in here, the wrong cases, justice will be served. There's so much more we can do with AI here locally as Nigerians and as Africans to solve our own unique pressing needs. That said, a couple of ideas, four ideas actually, for us to follow in charting our own AI innovation course. Number one. Let us build AI systems that always learn. Now, if I were to ask you, what is the better option of going from Aja 
to a in day. Option A, take the damn fool. Between 250 naira to 300 naira. Or take the lag bots. Option B, for 200 naira. You most likely might say, option B, it's cheaper. But those who are familiar with this route, you most likely say, option A. And why is that? And this is going for it's more expensive. And why is that? Number one, it's faster, lesser loading time. And secondly, it's more popular and it's readily available. Now, let's say hypothetically, Lagos State Government decided to create a dedicated lane all the way from Aja to Balinde, lesser loading time, faster, same price, dedicated lane. The dynamics of the game would change. And why is this? Because your option B right now would be way cheaper. At the same time, too, less traffic. No houses right there. Now, you see, based on what you've learned right now, and that's based on what you've learned right now, that's because you've, you've been able to reroute all of this whole thing right there. And it might interest you to know that um, artificial intelligence isn't necessarily taking the latest chatbot technology. It isn't about incorporating buzzy ML, li um, ML libraries into your software projects like TensorFlow, whatever. The real work here, guys, it's about building a continuous learning loop. Our systems should be able to continuously learn Point number two, breaking new ground always requires some sort of effort. And I'm sure most of you can relate to this. They say, there's a couple of things that says Rome wasn't built in a day. As cliche as that sounds, that truth still holds today. Once upon a time in the, in the history of our Nigerian entertainment industry, many of us sitting right here, we wouldn't even listen to Nigerian music. Our allegiance was the foreign music. In fact, Nigerian music, stay away, that's what it was. But today, totally different story. Not only are we listening and buying Nigerian music, our Nigerian music, sensational music, is now being exported globally. Our technological space shouldn't be any different. And why is this? You see these guys that we're celebrating today, the reason why we're doing this is because some early players in the game had put a lot of hard work and share efforts right there. Let us not shy away from the hard work required for groundbreaking African and global innovation. And we can do this, and we're already headed down that path. In the next five to 10 years, I see an African technological space in which we have producing global unicorns. Now, it might interest you to know, just to further emphasize on the whole importance of share effort, it might interest you to know that the initial training data set used for Lara's natural language processing system took my team and I four months to gather, refine all of this whole data. And Lara to date is still learning and there's too much more to be done. Point number three, localization. And this is time for us to test if we are true sons and daughters of the soil. Hey, how's it going? It's a popular way to say hello, Nigeria. Yes or no? No, it's not. How far? That's how we say hello around here. But to someone who's a non-native, you'd be like, oh, how far? Like, how far is what? It's, like, it's pretty confusing. We're not saying they now. The same way how we understand the same things. The same way the AI systems we built should be able to pick up and interpret certain nuances that are integral to our core. This is what makes our AI projects truly unique. Now, today you've seen how AI has been applied to solve our own specific transportation challenges here in Africa and Nigeria. Now, imagine how much more could be done if we applied it to our telecoms to our healthcare, to our power, to our Greek. Ladies and gentlemen, magic will happen. Point number four, I think it's something you actually need to hold if you don't get anything here today. Collaboration. As the talk said before us here, it seems very daunting. Let us learn to build together a whole community that learns to leverage on each other's successes, put in a real form of ego. No one man is an island. A tree doesn't make a forest. Repositories of knowledge and effort should continue to be reinvented across our communities. Now, a big shout out to the various Nigerian developer communities already doing an awesome job. Big shout out to you. Keep that fire burning. Now, someone may be here saying, um, that's a cool story, like, you know, I can't do AI. Like, what does it really take here? But can I really do this? Well, I'll give you just experience of mine. Like, you know, I say, you can do it. It's hard work determination, and then the right collaboration. Take me for instance now. 
I do not, I'm not a software engineer. All I have is a background in mechanical engineering with a mix of design thinking and data science. But with the right collaborative support from the tech industry, I've been able to push Lara to the market. On the final note, as I leave you, let us remember this. Africa is the world's last blue ocean for technology. Our problems are our assets. And if you can ride on each other's ideas, and some of the ideas I've shared with you today, then we stand a chance of leapfrogging our own development challenges through technology. Thank you.